The original game came into us as a submission from an unknown, unpublished author. And very rarely do any of those submissions ever make it out to being publishable. And we'd seen other games that were those kind of 4X space exploration and conquest games before, but our entire crew of playtesters at Micropro started really buzzing around this submission of a game that, that did it and did it in a way that was more fun than just playing with a spreadsheet, which is what most of those other ones were. It really had this wonderfully elegant balance of simplicity and complexity that made it very engaging. At the time, though, the art on it was terrible, the audio was non-existent, the interface was really clunky. It was still a very, very rough prototype game. And as I said, it needed new artwork, it needed new music, but it had, at its core, a very solid engine. So we wanted to be able to, to keep the engine, find a new body that we could build around it with a, a new group of artists and composers and so on, and redesign the interface, and turn it into a polished, publishable game. Hi, I'm Jeff D. I was the lead designer on Master of Orion 1. When I say I was the lead, I mean, in those days, art teams were relatively small. Uh, basically, I was the artist, and anything that I either couldn't do or had somebody else in mind that who I'd rather have do that thing, uh, it was my job to get it done. For example, the uh, creatures were uh, originally designed by Bill Willingham, who went on to do a lot of uh, pretty high-profile comic book work. I brought him in and we had a couple of meetings about how we wanted to approach the alien races. And then he did initial drawings of them and I did the final versions. Actually, I didn't even do all of the final versions of the aliens. Uh, George Purdy took some of Bill Willingham's drawings and made the variations uh, for the scientist, the general, the emperors, or the, the variations on the theme that Willingham had established. The hindmost of the Dalek Cabal greets you. We are sure we'll have much and more to discuss. So as the producer on the project, I was responsible for all of the business aspects, the contract negotiation, the project management aspects, and finding the resources and finding the right people to put together the pieces that Master of Orion needed. Actually, at the time, it was Star Lords. And it very much literally was that working out of a garage situation. Uh, the original design team for Master of Orion 1 was working out of Steven Barcia's house at the time that it was originally being developed. And when we put the deal together and started working on changing Star Lords into Master of Orion 1, I assembled the team of Jeff D and George Sanger and the other resources in the living room of George Sanger's house. So we sat around on a few couches, hashed out ideas for how can we polish this up, how can we make the interface better, how can we make the art look better, and how can we make this a, a commercially successful game using the engines that the Barcias had done. I'd worked with Jeff D on projects back at Origin Systems. Uh, I'd worked with George Sanger also at Origin Systems as well. He became famous for, he and Dave Govett, for doing the original soundtrack for the first Wing Commander games. And that just set the world on fire in terms of music and audio support back in those days. So pulling all those resources together, and we had a very short schedule at that point in time. We probably went from the point of signing the deal and taking that initial prototype to getting it out on the shelves in under six months. On the visual design, there were basic concepts in place, like Steve Barcia had in mind a catoid race and a bearoid race and the mechanical race, and he had names for them and things. That, that was already set. What was lacking was more thought being put into exactly how that would play out. And so I remember you know, talking with Bill Willingham. We didn't want to do just, it's a cat, but it's you know upright like a person. So we made sure you know, they had strange numbers of fingers or weird shaped ears or unusual eyes. We wanted to make them alien 
as well as hitting those established science fiction tropes. The ships that I designed for Mas Master of Orion were there for the purpose of allowing players to do their customization. Uh, you know, each ship has its own different types of engines and weapons and armor and, and all that, and, uh, and they come in different standard sizes. So my job was to, you know, come up with uh, several different overall styles of ships and then fill out, I believe it was four of each of the different sizes of ships within that general style. So there's ships that are spheres with engines attached to them, and there's ships that are more wedge-shaped. My involvement with the Master of Orion it started, it was, it was very simple. I was already part of Team Fat. That was me, George the Fat Man, Joe McDermott, and Kevin Phelan. We'd been working on games for several years up at that point. And we still had our connections, you know, from Jeff Johanneman, from working back in the days on, on, on Wing Commander and Underworld and Loom and all that. I think that was George's connections back then. And they had this com project come up. So they assigned me to this one since it was more cinematic style anyway. And that's how I got the gig. And what's interesting is, you know, I moved most of my equipment out of my home studio temporarily into the offices, which is basically, you know, keyboard, a couple computers, you know, and, and some outboard gear. So it was, it was all pretty portable. So I just moved it into a room at, the, at their headquarters. So I was actually able to be right there, you know, kind of watching the artwork come together and work on it, you know, with the Barcias and Joe Hanneman and Jeff D and all them. And I actually got to work on that first game in-house, so to speak, but as a contractor. So it was a good experience. In the original Master of Orion, the art budget was very small and the deadline was very short. On the plus side, we had very specific uh, things that had to be done to finish the game and get it to a publishable form. And we did that, and uh, it all got finished. I, of course, in retrospect, you always wish that you had more time, more money, more resources to do everything. There, um, um, you're never 100% satisfied with anything you do, but the public seemed to like it.